Today on Tocant, we're looking at the Don Bluth und Sonne, or as most people call it, the Don Bluth and Son. So this is a brand that I had the opportunity to go hands-on with about two weeks ago, and I really want to talk about it because that's a brand that doesn't get much of the spotlight. So first we'll look a little bit of brand history and what the brand is about, and then I'll talk about what really impresses me about the brand, what I'm more maybe on the fence about, and the things that I think they could improve. Hi everyone and welcome, I'm Ben. So I must mention that if you're interested in Don Bluth, you must go watch the excellent video by Watchfinder. Uh, the talking hand guy made an amazing video. Uh, if you search for best watchmaking secret Watchfinder, you'll find it is one of the first one that comes up and I highly recommend it. Now let's look at Don Bluth history. Uh, it's really a father-son uh, story actually. Uh, the company started in 1962, but actually the story goes back even before that. Uh, Dieter Don Bluth, the father, uh, was a watchmaker and he was working mostly on, on pocket watch movements. And he was working on one that really caught his attention and, and his focus and, and uh, he, he was really enamored with this watch. And when he had to give it back in 1959, uh, he decided to actually uh, start his own movement or decided to design his own watch. And so in November 1959, he started doing that and he sketched uh, an idea. Over the next three years, he actually went to school apparently, or watchmaking school, to uh, even increase his knowledge about how to really uh, make that work. But then eventually in 1962, he took over a, a watch studio, a watch repair uh, business, uh, and you know the idea fell on, on the side and he put the idea in the drawer and never thought about it again because the business was going well and he had other things to think about. Uh, fast forward to his 60th birthday actually, his son, uh, so Dirk Donbluth was also working with him, he was also a master watchmaker, and he gave his father for his 60th uh, birthday a watch that he had designed himself. And that's when Dieter Donbluth uh, told his son about his, his idea that he had all the way back in 1959 and he took the plans out of the drawer and showed, showed, uh, showed it to him. So they decided, you know, why don't, why don't we make this happen and why don't we actually create that watch? And this is how Don Bluth as a, as a, as a watch company uh, started. So now Don Bluth is still a very small independent watchmaker and this is what I love about it. It's the father and the son. I mean the father doesn't work there anymore but it's now uh, the son Dirk Don Bluth. Uh, they only have nine employees and three watchmakers. So it's basically 13 people uh, and they are using all traditional methods. Uh, the machines that they use uh, or not new CNC machines. They make watches in the traditional way. I think the uh, youngest machine that they have is about 35 years old all the way to 120 years old uh, machine that they use. Uh, sometimes they actually had to make a machine out of the parts of several other old machines to make it work because they didn't have the money to, to invest in all new machinery and also because they make things uh, in, in the old way. Uh, I think Dirk Donbruth said in one of the, the company videos that uh, the only difference between the old traditional uh, watchmaking ways of uh, 100 years ago and now is that now they have electricity. So the Don Bluth workshop is located in a small town northeast of Hanover. I think it's called Kalbi or maybe Kalber in German. Uh, it's, it's very small. Uh, you know, everything is handmade over there and they actually limit the number of watches that they make to 10 to 15 maximum per month. Um, even the boxes that they put their watches in when they deliver them are also handmade by actually a family friend. Uh, Dirk Donbluth mentioned that uh, the guy who makes the boxes for them uh, has a full-time job. He's a, he's a school teacher, but on the side is also a, a woodworker and he makes those beautiful watches, uh, watch, watch boxes made of uh, elm tree, which is local to the area uh, and that are very unique because they have uh, basically a, a, an aperture or hole at the, at the top where where you can see the, the dial of the watch and you can also use that as a, as a table clock. They also have a, a, a registry, they also maintain a registry kind of like Patek Philippe so that when you buy a watch from them um, you, you will be entered into the registry and even if you sell your watch or if you're the second owner you can contact them and they'll put your name in the registry and they can go you know all the way back to the first watches and they still maintain the, the international registry. Now, about two weeks ago, I had the opportunity to visit uh, an importer of uh, independent watchmakers in Hong Kong, and uh, I got my hands on a Don Bluth. Uh, this is actually the first time that I saw one in, in, in real life and put it on my wrist, and uh, I was very impressed by it. Um, I want to go over a few things that impressed me about the brand, and not necessarily about this particular watch, but the brand in general. 
Uh, number one is, uh, you know, what you're getting for the money. I mean, that goes uh, with a lot of other uh, independent watchmakers, but especially with this one, uh, the level of hand finishing, the level of uh, customization that you get for a watch that you can get for a base model under 5,000 US dollars. I think that's pretty much unheard of. And maybe uh, I can think of uh, Benzinger, where you can also get some uh, dial that is a uh, uh, guilloche handmade. Uh, there might be a few other ones, but I think if you look at Swiss watchmaking, you're pretty much out of luck. Uh, so the customization that you get with Don Bluth uh, is unlimited. You can basically uh, design your own watch and they'll have it, uh, they'll make it for you. Uh, the downside is that it will take up to a year to receive your watch. I have one of my viewers who uh, told me that he just ordered one and the wait time is one year. So first look at the dial side. You could actually customize pretty much anything. Um, the dial base is brass and uh, in the traditional Don Bluth it's going to come with a silver coating. But you could actually upgrade that to one of their kind of famous ceramic dials. Uh, and we'll talk about that in the next section. But you could uh, customize this to any color that you want. Uh, then the numerals, uh, you could have apply numerals or you could also have a, a technique that is uh, almost unique to Don Bluth now is engraved numerals and engraved chapter ring. Uh, this is something that's reminiscent uh, of the pocket watches of the days of yore, uh, but that no one else still does it, but Don Bluth still does that. Um, also uh, hands, you could have uh, you know, the steel hands or you could have heat blued hands that they do themselves. Now if we look at the other side and we look at the movements, so um, Don Bluth offers different types of movement. They started working off uh, 6498 uh, Unitas base, uh, but it's not like they just take uh, you know, a Unitas and then drop it into a case. Uh, actually, um, they, they change it quite a lot. They keep the architecture, uh, but 60 to 75% of the 6498 um, uh, it's, it's, it's changed. I mean, they, they throw most of it away and 60% of the movement is actually uh, in-house up to 75% of the movement. I think uh, in an interview, Dirk Don Bruce explained that I think for the 99.0, uh, it's the base movement where they have 60% of the movement is in-house all the way to the 99.2, 3 and 5 uh, and the regulator uh, and the global timer where they have 75% of, of the movement that is actually in-house. So yes, still some of it is 6498, but most of it is actually in-house. And they make their own parts, they make everything on the traditional machines, uh, all hand-finished. Uh, it's um, uh, it's uh, coated in uh, uh, um, rose gold uh, and then it's engraved in, in, in uh, yellow gold. Uh, you could have actually your own engraving in it. As long as it fits, they'll put anything on the movement. This is, uh, you know, this is probably the best 6498 inspired movement that you'll find. I mean, compare that to what uh, Stova is doing, for example, and you'll see the difference. But they also have two other uh, in-house movements. Uh, in 2010, they came up with the Quintus 2010, and then in 2016, they had another smaller version for ladies' watches. And uh, that uh, in-house movement actually is very um, also uh, unique in a way that it's a double barrel um, architecture uh, with uh, what they call a Maltese cross system that is um, able to take advantage and even out the power or the torque uh, release from the twin barrel. And this is a, a system that only Alanga Unzener is also using, well, they use a fusée and chain, which is, uh, you know, a more uh, high-end, uh, but except uh, Alanga Unzener, basically, uh, Don Bluth is the only other German brand that is using this type of, uh, of, of, of system, and it is patented. So this is much more uh, expensive. I think it starts about the 8,000 euro mark. Uh, but if you go with their base movement, uh, the one inspired, uh, you know, 99.0, 3, 2, 4, 5, uh, you're still getting... Uh, hand-finished, mostly in-house movement for, uh, you know, a lot less money. So now let's talk about the things that I'm more on the fence about. So it doesn't mean they're bad, it's just that I'm not quite sure where I stand. Uh, first, the size. So Don Bluth watches come in 38.5, uh, 40 millimeter and 42 millimeter. So the one that I tried two weeks ago, the Moon Phase, uh, I think it's the 99.6M, uh, is a 40 mil watch. But I have to say it wears quite big actually, and it has a 50 uh, millimeter lug to lug. So I think I could pull it off, but uh, it's probably as big as I would want to go with a dressier type of piece like that. Uh, but a lot of the other watches come in 42, and I think 42 would probably look huge. And um, I, I think it kind of clashes with, uh, with the overall aesthetic of uh, a dressier piece. 
Um, now the 38.5 I'm sure will look perfect but the, the thing is that because it's 38.5 that means you can only get it with the in-house Quintus 2010 and that means a, a lot more uh, money obviously because I think it starts around 8,000 euro. So um, something to think about. Now the second thing is the ceramic dial uh, that I talked about uh, before. So in a way, yes, it's really impressive because they are able to make their in-house ceramic dial uh, with their own uh, oven. I mean, they really make it in-house. They, they, don't, they don't get it from a third-party vendor. You can get it in any color that you want as long as it's a Pantone color. I think they'll work with you so you can really get a unique dial that is just, uh, you know, your, your, your piece unique watch. Now, um, it's the look of it. The one that I tried two weeks ago uh, is a ceramic dial. It's a white ceramic dial and it was matte dial. Um, I was not in love with it. And I think uh, possibly it's because it was matte and not glossy. Uh, if, if you talk about ceramics or um, just a general kind of overview, you have different types of ceramic. Okay, you have the enamel dial, uh, which is made of a glass powder and usually it's fused to a metal base. So, you know, Breguet or Langonzoner will use gold. Most of the other brand will, will use brass. And then you will get this very um, vitreous glass look, like kind of like a wet paint. And, I, I, and it's very pure and I love, I love an enamel dial. And a grand feu enamel dial is the same process that is repeated layer after layer after layer. And of course, the more you do it, the more chances you have that it will crack. So it, it gets, uh, there's a lot of wastage and it gets very expensive. But a grand feu enamel dial uh, is, is really, you know, very, very beautiful. Uh, usually also it comes in, in a very few colors. It comes in white, um, you can get it in black, uh, uh, Breguet is doing it in dark blue, Patek Philippe is doing it in kind of cream in the, in the 5178G. Uh, but you know, not as many colors, right, as, as a ceramic dial. Now you also have a um, porcelain dial, uh, which is also glass powder, but it's mixed with clay. So the porcelain dial will give a more like milky kind of look and Seiko makes porcelain dials. To me, it reminds me more of a, of a pocket watch. It's more like a vintage kind of a look. I prefer enamel to porcelain, but um, that's just me. And then you have the ceramic dial, which I, I think looks more modern. So you have, of course, uh, Omega uh, ceramic dials that they have on their 300M. They also have it both in matte and in glossy. And then uh, that's what Dom, Dom Bluth is, is going for with this one, it's, it's a ceramic. Um, so the advantage of, of going with ceramic uh, compared to enamel, one is cost, of course, is, is, is cheaper, it's easier to make, but also, you know, it's, it's more elastic. That's what they explain is that uh, it won't crack as much. So uh, in terms of durability, it's much better. And because uh, this ceramic dial is more elastic, they are able to, they are able to actually engrave it uh, with a chapter ring and with a numeral, just like they do on their uh, traditional, uh, you know, silver coated dials. So you, you can get this, um, Kind of enamel look with the engraved uh, numerals that you probably couldn't get with the enamel. Now um, maybe it's just this specific one because it was matte that didn't really work for me. Maybe if it were glossy and it would look more like enamel, closer to enamel, I would like it. So I'm not, I'm on the fence, I'm not sure, maybe it depends on the, on the color. But I do know now that uh, they actually offer a real enamel dial. I've seen it on the Instagram recently and I asked them about it ask is this ceramic enamel looking ceramic or is this real enamel they replied to me and they said it's real enamel but it's only available in white for now so i think that might be the way that i would want to go and finally the things that i think they could improve or maybe should improve that's going to be a short list but basically two things uh, number one is the case shape so they use basically the same case shape for all their different models and uh, you know it's okay i've seen it uh, it's nicely finished it's nicely brushed and polished but it's basically a stamped case and i would like to see maybe something that's more in line with all the the hand finishing that they offer on their dials and on their movement uh, i have a things for lugs okay some people have a things for legs i have a things for lugs and i would love to see maybe a soldered lugs is that what they're called when you know they attach the lugs and then you finish them by hand uh, that would be that would be beautiful something like a Vutilainen kind of uh, case shape I think that would look amazing so uh, that maybe they could keep this case shape which is more modern and then offer another one uh, which is more um, uh, traditional that would be nice uh, another thing is the straps and the and the claps or the buckles the straps I think uh, they don't offer enough variety uh, most of their watches will come on an alligator strap which 
was kind of meh, but you know, it's not that, it's not that uh, impressive and uh, it's kind of generic, I think. Also, I would prefer to put my watch not on, on Alligator, I don't like it. Uh, so, I mean, maybe if they offered something like a suede or maybe like a Safiano leather or, you know, wider variety uh, of, of, of straps. I know this is a small thing, you could always change it. Uh, there are tons of aftermarket uh, straps, but you know, for people who like to have an OEM strap with their watch, um, that would be nice for them to offer a greater variety. And that leads me to the to the clasp, the clasp or the buckle. Uh, uh, I think all of them come with a with a buckle. Mm, I would like to see a clasp, uh, especially on the larger, heavier models. I think you 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 should have a clasp. Um, I'm not quite 100% sure they might be offering this as an option, but I don't really see it uh, as, a, as, a, as a standard choice. So uh, don't quote me on this, but uh, definitely that's something I want to see. So in summary, my feelings about the brand is that this is something very special, if not possibly unique in watchmaking, that for starting at around 5,000 US dollars, you can get a watch that is uh, mostly handmade. Uh, now, you know, this is something that I would consider getting for a, a special occasion. I feel like this is a special occasion watch. You can work directly with them and basically create a piece unique, something that bespoke only to you. You can choose every single little aspect of the dial and the movement and have your own initials if you want or your lucky number engraved in the back. And then you're going to wait for a long time for it. Now, if you think that you're giving up something because you're going with traditional watchmaking, uh, you're not. So the, the accuracy on these watches is very good. If you look online, you'll find owners saying that after a year, two years, three years of ownership, uh, the watch is running only plus one or plus three or plus two uh, seconds a day. Uh, and this is why Don Bluth recommend uh, service intervals of six to eight years. So uh, what do you think about Don Bluth? Would you consider getting a bespoke piece like this? Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, thank you for watching. As usual, you know, uh, subscribe for more uh, and I'll see you in the next one.